So, uh, I'm Maciej Ogrodniczuk and I'd like to uh, greet you uh, on behalf of the local organizers and speakers. That's me, Petya, uh, Nicola and Tomasz. Uh, and of course, the Clarin office, who is rep represented by many people here. I can see Linda, Maria, uh, Daria. Uh, I can't scroll all the participants because there are too many of them, but that's good, I guess. So, uh, Clarin Cafe is an initiative uh, that's uh, intended to help researchers, lecturers, and students meet interactively and discuss uh, topics which are relevant uh, to the community. And uh, today we are meeting to serve you uh, some coffee with the mint flavor. That's uh, the name of our project. Uh, so, we will tell you about uh, our Clarin funded projects related to parliamentary data and present results, current results of the project, and try to engage you in what we are doing. So, there will be incentives for you uh, in the form of mini grants, but we'll uh, save it for the end. So, uh, as you can see, the program is quite intense. So, to keep you alive, we'll try to uh, keep our presentations quite short. Let's get it started. And I will start with uh, my short part about uh, Parliament in a nutshell. So, uh, what is Parliament? It's a project that uh, uh, is planned to last for about a year, founded by Clarin and dealing with uh, national parliamentary data, mostly speeches and speech related metadata, because we believe that. That reflects what's important at a certain period of time. And uh, if a topic is relevant to the nation as a whole, it's uh, discussed in the parliament. That's how it happens. Uh, so the current hot topic uh, and the actual motivation um, of the present uh, resources uh, that we are creating uh, is the COVID pandemic, uh, but also the methodology and the tools and the know-how uh, that we are creating can be applied to uh, many different important topics and we believe that we as a community we will be able to test it over different topics and different periods. Uh, so how is it implemented? What does it mean uh, when we say that we are able to observe trends and track what people discuss with respect to the pandemic? Uh, our idea is to gather two sets of data. One is reflecting the period where uh, when COVID was discussed in the parliament, uh, and that's starting in November last year. Uh, until practically now, we thought it will end sooner, but apparently it, uh, uh, well, it's not that good. Uh, and we also have some reference data sets. We defined it as uh, some portion of data before it all started. So uh, 2015 was uh, set as uh, the starting date, but it's more about the size of data than any specific point in time. It happens, for example, in Poland that uh, the new cadence uh, starts uh, in 2000, started in 2015. So it's a perfect date for us, but it might not be a perfect date for um, other languages. And uh, it doesn't mean that we want to have the dates, the, the data uh, starting in 2015. Uh, so another aspect of our data is its uh, multilinguality. So we started with four languages and this is what corresponds to what we call the phase one. That's the moment, uh, the end of phase one is uh, the moment where we are presently in. And the second phase aims at adding several more languages to our data set. Uh, so what's exactly our model? Because it's not just gathering data. We have many corpora of parliamentary data out there. Uh, what's so special about our data? It's mainly the fact it's uh, not just getting what's out there, but uh, first of all, standardizing it. So we have the same subset of metadata for all, all languages. We have the same representation of this data and metadata. And we have the same linguistic annotation, which covers uh, UD syntax and named entities. Uh, and we have interfaces to access this data set in a uniform way with this concordances and uh, hopefully we'll also have parameter in a week. Uh, we know it's the first step, but we hope it will grow and we hope it will ha help us make uh, useful demonstrations uh, in political sciences and digital humanities uh, based on our data. And that's uh, the plan for what we call the phase one, a uh, phase two. And uh, here we have some tasks for you which is adding new languages, new parliaments, and there are also some uh, tasks for us. Uh, that means uh, building use cases based uh, not just on our data, but also on your data. Who are we? That's probably 10 seconds is enough to show it. Uh, there are several people related uh, 
some of them are related to NLP, uh, but we also have uh, Ruben Ross, uh, who is a historian and digital humanist. Uh, we have Daria and Christina, who were involved in the Voices of Parliament tutorial. And we have Philip and Tomasz uh, from Parlameter side. So uh, we are keeping the NLP stuff from all languages, but uh, we now in phase two are going to move to a more user-oriented perspective. Uh, so uh, what uh, you are going to see next in the next presentations uh, will help you take a look at our results so far. And they are the representation schema for parliamentary data, that's called Parlaclarin, uh, the corpora, uh, which are ready to download, but also to search uh, in your favorite concord uh, answer, no sketch engine or context, and uh, a lot of know-how we gathered and uh, what's coming really, so I already told you about it, is the, the parlameter um, interface that will give you even more user-friendly experience to look inside our data uh, than what uh, concordances offer because they are useful for linguists uh, rather than an average user, as we call it. Mm -hmm.